welcome back everybody to the video series dedicated show on MTV where the contestants love to give nose kisses before fighting to the death. That's right, I'm talking about the challenge season 33 War of the World Reunion! And this is different than other challenge reunions because normally they're broken up into three different parts, expanded over like three weeks, and sometimes we don't even know the winner until the very end, but this time it's one time, one week only, two hour block, and we already know the winner, Turbo Tarabi. And speaking of which, he looked like a million bucks even though he only won $750,000. And the reunion actually started off in a really good note because all the questions were directed to him on like how he felt like uh, as winning the challenge in his rookie season and he said it felt like a dream come true. But however, because he wasn't affected into all the drama and everything, we seldomly heard from him and we heard from other cast members that only lasted like two or three episodes which was very very disappointing. Now if you've seen my other videos, Normally, I like to get very detailed in the recaps and the review, however, because this is a reunion, there was a ton of questions, a ton of people yelling, so I have my notes, and I only boiled it down to the very important things that I felt were important, or you, the Twitterverse, while I was live tweeting during this episode, was important. So I'm just going to get into, first, the relationships. Uh, we saw a few relationships happen in the house, some off camera, some deleted scenes, but let's just get into it and where they are now. We started out with Bear and Georgia, and they do, they've do they been doing the hankety-panky here and there outside of the challenge house, but at the moment they are not doing anything. They're just, they're just acquaintances. Just, they're just acquaintances. Uh, then we had Nani and Hunter, which they are not a thing anymore. And this was like recorded five months ago, or a couple of months ago. And Nani let it out of the bag that Hunter was having a baby, which he sent out like uh, the ultrasound like a month, month and a half ago. So he looked visibly distressed when she brought up the whole pregnant thing. Uh, but now it's just everybody's public knowledge now on the Twitter account that he hardly ever posts to. Then we have Ashley and Zahida. We didn't see that very much in the actual cut of the episode, but we saw it in basic training, and they even showed us in the deleted scenes. But that was merely just a showman's. There's nothing happening outside the house. Jenna and Zach are good. Morgan is getting her daily dosage of potassium. Um, yes, her and Bananas are doing a Bananas with Benefits kind of thing going on. And the one that was in the limelight going into this, the sound bites, uh, everything it was in every sound bite, every video. It was Cam and Leroy. They were having, they were friends with feelings for a little bit, but this whole thing transpired when Cam went to Las Vegas to hang out with Leroy. She went out with a friend that she says, but Leroy says that it wasn't just a friend. She was acting kind of sneaky. Cam says that Leroy was overreacting a bit. Um, People are taking sides. People can see both sides. Some people can only see one side. One thing that really stuck out was the soundbite of Leroy saying that the only regret he had was hooking up with Cam, which you gotta phrase it better than that. I think he was trying to say that he misses the friendship with Cam, that they muddy things up by hooking up and it was he's very sad about that but the way he was saying it you know you gotta know that you're gonna be talking about this on national TV you have to be able to phrase it a little bit better uh, then I regret hooking up with Cam because that was everywhere on every promo video every sneak peek video come on Leroy this is like your 11th season 10th season you gotta know what's going on um, so now let's get into some of the beefs that were touched upon in this episode. And let's start off with getting our feet wet with Zach. Zach was getting beef from every which way in this reunion. He was getting beef with Amanda. He was talking about his beef with Kara, about the Captain Jack Sparrow thing, but Kara and him are saying, ah, that's fine, I'm, we're okay with that. Johnny and Leroy was very upset with Zach because of the whole, uh, and, and this was what made Twitterverse super upset in this episode is that Zach was like I don't even want to I didn't from day one I didn't even want to be on the challenge on this challenge my mind wasn't in it I just didn't want to be there anyways which why why were you there why did you have to get on the flight nobody's holding a gun to your head uh, banana says something about him wanting to be in a wedding you can be in the wedding just don't show up to this challenge if you don't want to be here you're taking the spot of some great challenger that we've been wanting to see forever aka uh the people that were in orlando i would have taken any of those over zach this season if he didn't want to be in there but 
So he was hit with the crossfire, whether Zach said it or not, that he said that she was a layup, that she wouldn't do anything noteworthy in the challenge, that he was going to leave early regardless of what was going on. Uh, that made her very upset. Also, Zach lied to her because apparently they were always together talking about uh, deals and everything, and he kept on saying, oh, I want to be here. I'm going to fight for you. I'm going to fight for this. However, he was making a deal with Johnny for sure, but maybe even Wes to say, hey, if you're going into the, if you're going into elimination, pick me and I'll just lay on the grenade. I'll just lose on purpose and you can stay in. I don't want to be there anyways, which is messing up with her game and it's a little bit of a lie. It's not a little bit. It's a very much a lie and manipulation on Zach's end. And Zahida was like, I don't think I could trust him going into any other challenge seasons. But I just remember Twitterverse was going nuts for that. The next one we have is Polly getting into fights with everybody. Whether it was Johnny, whether it was Kyle, whether it was whoever would look at him funny. He even got into a fight with Ashley Kane because they wanted to answer the same question at the same time. And then they were about to do like nose kisses to each other. And then this whole thing was going to be settled by who was taller. What is this? Middle school? Why are we talking about who is taller? At one point... Ashley Kane said something about Polly being short. Polly gets up off the couch to stand next to each other, and I don't know what they're gonna do back to back. And whoever was taller, both of them look the same exact height. So if one's small, they're both small. It doesn't even matter at that point. Um, but it just was so ridiculous. It was so barbaric. I just don't understand it. And I get that Polly is a good competitor in the game when he's doing challenges, and I can bear him when he's in challenges. However, when he's at these kind of reunions, he just likes to get into everybody's face. It's sort of entertaining, but also gets very repetitive and very, like, just annoying at certain points. Next, I want to talk about all the beef that Devon was in during this challenge. Uh, during this reunion, she was in a lot of beef. She was uh, talking constantly with The Miz and other people on whether it was for her YouTube videos or just things that were said on Twitter. She commanded the stage at certain points. The first one I want to talk about is her and Killa Cam. Um, they had a falling out on social media. They unfollowed each other. There was mistrust in their relationship at some point in their friendship. A lot of people were suspecting that it was because they both liked Theo. However, they both confirmed that it wasn't about Theo at all. It was just a mistrust. It was a misunderstanding, a miscommunication, which at the end, they decided to hug at the end of that segment, which is great. I want to see people make up and be ready to go in the next season of the challenge. The next one was Day and West. Now, this one was all over Twitter. This is the one where they were in the tent. Devon was saying that she was going to be outside of this game, put a knee and elbow in Nick West's face outside of this game and then he's gonna know what's up but before the episode aired he tweeted out that saying that she was gonna get her boys to come out and take him out like murderously um, that did not end well I remember Twitter just being a buzz about this both people for Wes Wes's fans slash stands and Davon's fans slash stands also Wes haters also Davon haters were going at each other Twitter, challenge Twitter sphere was messy that day. Devon got, was into tears saying that there was a lot of hate speech, there was a lot of other things that were said to her directly in her DMs, outside of her DMs, everything, people were calling her work. It shouldn't have been said at all. Like you shouldn't quote something if you don't have the direct quote with you. And I'm so glad we saw the deleted scene so we know exactly what Devon said, what transpired, and it wasn't anything as bad as Wes had said initially on Twitter. So um, at the end of that segment, Wes apologized and Devon agreed and accepted the apology and even said uh, at the backstage that he, she was glad that he said something about it, acknowledged it, and apologized for it. So that's always nice. Finally, we have Devon versus Kara, which this was mainly surrounding the Georgia incident where Bear was talking to his girlfriend slash cousin slash both and uh, Kara ran over to get Georgia, bring her out there. Devon initially said, and still holds on, that Kara was stirring the pot. She didn't, she calls into question Kara's motives, saying she didn't do it because she felt like Georgia needed to know, or she was trying to help women everywhere. She was just trying to stir the pot. She was taking a page out of Johnny Banana's books and just stirring the pot, which 
Kara even confirms that she kind of wanted to stir the pot anyways because she didn't really care for Bear at certain points and that he was just being annoying and she wanted Georgia to know so that there would be a kickoff as say, uh, as Georgia would say. Um, but Georgia even came out and said that even if she wanted to get me all riled up and get Bear in the doghouse, at least she knew. At least somebody told her and, and she got to see for herself. Uh, Davon said, oh, I would have told you maybe more privately, maybe at a different time when nobody, no, not a ton of people and ton of cameras are around. I just didn't want to say it in front of everybody. And, and this is where you call into question motives. Is the motives behind something important? And I think a, a, a metaphor I was thinking of is what if your friend, what if your best friend volunteered at a soup kitchen but they posted it everywhere on their social media. They made it a point to bring it up in like every conversation. Every time you went out to dinner, lunch, just walking your dog, they had to bring up that they volunteered at a soup kitchen. And so their motives seem like they're saying, hey, I volunteer. Just kind of rub it in your face. Rub it in that they volunteer. Rub it in that they might be a better person than you. However, does that take away from the fact that they volunteered to help out someone less fortunate, to help out somebody that could use the help. Do, th then that's the question I'm posing to you. Do motives count in something like this, in something like the soup kitchen metaphor? Let me know in the comment section below. And what team are you on? Are you on team day or are you on team Kara? Let me know that in the comment section below. And if you were Georgia, what would you rather have? Would you rather your friend bring you into the middle of the situation while it's happening or would you like to wait and get a little one-on-one, -on -one, maybe at a different time, at a better time? Let me know that too. And what was your favorite part of this reunion? What was your least favorite part of this reunion? Does your favorite, was your favorite from this challenge uh, talk to you enough or said enough? Or were they kind of just masked off in the, in, the, in the shadows because they weren't part of all the drama? Let me know that in the comment section below. And what, did you like that this was just a two hour block and not like three parts that were uh, through like um, the next month. Let me know that in the comment section below. I want to hear what you have to say and I'm also taking a survey. If your TV did what my TV did and had no title available for like the next 25 hours because I had a little bit of a panic attack because I got to the challenge a little bit late thinking oh it's recording and I'll just get there and then maybe go through some of the commercials. However, it said no title available. It could not be recorded and I got there like a couple. If I would have waited 30 more minutes, I would have missed so much did your TV do this? I want to know I'm not the only one that had to go through this pain. Let me know that in the comment section below. And will you be sad? Are you sad that this challenge has ended? Are you sad that we have to say goodbye to this one? But let me tell you right now, there with a challenge end, there's a challenge right on the horizon. And I just want to ask you, what was your favorite scene from this season? Who was your favorite castmate? And did you like the reunion? Let me know that too. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being on this journey with me through this challenge, making videos. But let me tell you right now, there's so many more shows to talk about. There's so many things to do with past seasons of the challenge, with past competitors, vets, legends, rookies in the challenge that I'm going to be making so many videos come very, very soon. Stay tuned. I cannot wait to make them and for have you watch them and give me your critique. But thank you so much for watching. I cannot wait for you to see them. And thank you so much for joining me on this. And while you're down there, hit that like and subscribe button. And I'll be back really, really soon with more videos. But until then, peace.